I'm about to interview Preston Smith regarding the march to replace Biden, so I think I'll read his press release before he comes on. For immediate release, citizens plan to take to the streets and demand better for the American people in U.S. cities on August 8th and 15th, 2020. The grassroots organizers behind March to Replace Biden are planning a series of marches and other actions across the country this and next Saturday to send a message to delegates participating in this month's DNC. We're asking marchers to please wear a mask. Marches on the 8th will begin 2 p.m. Eastern Time and 11 a.m. on the West Coast. We are standing up across the U.S. to call out the Democratic National Committee and their candidate, Joe Biden, as they attempt to force another corporate-centric candidate on the American people with a vote for us or get Trump platform. Specifically, organizers are using city-based event pages created on their March to Replace Biden Facebook page to inform the participants' start location and destination. We are demanding that Democrats choose between two options. Number one, replace Joe Biden with a candidate unchained to corporate donors, such as Bernie Sanders. Or number two, institute a platform that addresses the needs of Americans that includes Medicare for all. If the demands are ignored, we pledge to withhold our votes for the Democratic Party nominee while focusing on down-ballot candidates. Many of us have little left to lose. Vice President Joe Biden's challenges versus Trump. Obvious cognitive decline since 2016, chief author of the effectively racist 1994 crime bill, self-proclaimed gaffe master and serial liar, on the president's right in foreign policy, militaristic and supportive Iraq war, supporter of job outsourcing Trans-Pacific Partnership, credible allegations of sexual assault in 1993, and long video record of inappropriate touching. We are in an unprecedented time and we are demanding historically precedented action. At this critical moment in our country's history, where millions are suffering and neither party is promising relief, we are demanding better. The man, the myth, the legend. Good to see you. Good to see you. I just read your entire press release out loud, so everything, all the information on it, the audience already knows. So if we want to, we can elaborate on it, or we can just start ranting about all of the demands, whatever you like, the, the floor is open. All right, if we want, yeah, if we want to uh, pick apart everything, that's fine with me. Great. All right, so, so we've changed the dates. How is that going? It, it does, does everything seem to be coming together now for the 8th? And uh, what's today? What's today's date? Uh, the fifth. Fifth. Okay, so so, looks like you have two dates in mind. If I go back to the press release, eighth and the fifteenth, two Saturdays, right? Mm -hmm. At least. At least. Good. I'm glad. Okay, so these are like hammer blows that we need to get started. So so, what do you think? What what's what's it going to look like on this first Saturday coming up? We've got about 20 or so, uh, give or take, cities uh, set up. Um, I'm, I'm hoping we can see um, at least a few people at each. Um, I've learned from experience that, you know, you might plan for 100, but you know, might only get 30, um, which, I mean, given given the times we're in, you know, is, is quite a bit. But, um, you know, stranger things have happened. Um, I'm hoping, though, that we at least get a few people out that can uh, can make enough noise. Uh, we're working with uh, Movement for a People's Party now. A lot of what we're doing is is um, based off of uh, a lot of their tactics, um, including their most recent um, actions um, when they went to, to members of Congress uh, houses um, and, and gave them demands. We're kind of doing the same thing, where we're going to to post our demands on the uh, on the doors of um, the uh, of the local DNC headquarters in whatever city uh, the the event is taking place in. In addition, we're gonna um, we're gonna launch a uh, phone slash email slash snail mail campaign, which we can continue going. Make sure we can keep pushing for. Um, every day going forward, even after the, the physical events are done, 
uh, when and if we decide that we don't, we're not going to do any more physical uh, stuff. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm approaching this from, from many different angles. Um, I don't want to give too much away right now, but I'm, uh, I'm, I'm planning uh, something else uh, going uh, post the 15th regarding the UN. Um, so we'll see, we'll see how that uh, plays out. But um, I mean, at this, at this point in the game, there is, you know, you've got, there, there's, there's so much going on right now in terms of the police brutality and pandemic response and the hijacking of our democracy that I think we're, you know, this isn't all gonna just go away on, um, you know, January 21st. If, yeah, if let's say Biden is still there and gets elected, it's it, nothing's just gonna magically fix itself. And so we're all, you know, so, you know, people are still gonna be displaced because of the pandemic. Uh, nothing's gonna change from the police brutality. Um, you know, we're gonna keep, you know, it's, it, I think we're at the point now where the American people are ready to start making some noise and demand their country back. And if, if, if the powers that be don't, you know, don't want to listen to us now, they're going to, they're going to have to keep putting up with us further down the road. So my, my slogan has basically been at this point, how big of a headache do you want? Listen to us now or, or further down the road that we keep, we keep making noise. Yep, I've, I'm totally in agreement. The only way we're going to get out of this mess is through disruption, through protests, through strikes. We're not going to vote our way out of it. And it's clear that your movement is set up with disruption at the very center. And I noticed also you talked about the, the convention. What are your thoughts about the convention and disrupting it? We personally haven't really... Um planned like on any of us um going per se but if you know we will encourage anyone if they can to get out to milwaukee um our our focus has always really been prior to the convention um but there's a there is a growing push for um for action at the convention um People have have been planning that for a long time, and we fully we fully support that. Um, and we will uh, we will encourage people to, to go out there. But there's there's um, you know there's there's growing tension for the, uh, just the people going out there, and then there's also now talks that um, a lot of Bernie's delegates are gonna just you know protest at the convention if if you know. The, the platform doesn't include things like Medicare for all. Um, so I think we're going to, I think it's going to be, it's going to be very interesting to see. I'm, I'm interested to see what's going to happen over the next few days. Um, there's, there's talks all over that, you know, with or without us, Biden's not going to make it. And, um, but I think we just, you know, we need to make sure that our voice is heard, make sure that we, that everyone knows you know, we definitely don't want him, and we want some. We want someone in there that's actually going to be for us in this time of crisis. Nina Turner did us a good turn the other day. I don't know if you noticed, but when she was being talked down to by the Biden delegates it, at a, I guess it was a Zoom conference or some other teleconference, the the Biden delegates were telling the Bernie delegates that they were acting like children, and and Nina said it was unacceptable. A few days before that, somebody was asking her about Biden, and she said, voting for Biden is like eating only half a bowl of shit as opposed to the whole bowl. And I was like, Nina, if Nina steps it up, just imagine what it would be like if Nina were, were at one of these marches to replace Biden. That would be a, a major uh, blow to the people who want party unity and are trying to keep everything together. I would love to see that. Nina's, Nina's, to me, the most visible person right now at the front of our movement, that, that she's not going to just go down quietly. She's not just going to accept Biden. I mean, if she's calling him half a bowl of shit in public, that's that's pretty clear she's not just accepting it. 
I was so encouraged by her. I don't know what your other thoughts are. I, I know you've got a lot of irons in the fire and things come to your mind as, as things progress. The one thing I want to stress that I think you're right on about is that nothing is going to happen through voting. That, that protesting, and, and I add strikes. You haven't said anything about striking, but I believe that um, work stoppages, and whether they're within unions or just wildcat strikes, combined with protests like we've seen with the with the um, police brutality. Also, I've noticed that the police brutality it has become about more than just racial injustice. It's also becoming about economic injustice. And, and I'm really encouraged by that. So your marches, as you've mentioned, kind of dovetail with the with the Black Lives Matter marches. And I'm hoping eventually that it dovetails with Dr. Martin Luther King's vision of poor people's marches, that the, that these marches, that these protests, whether whether violent or not, whether property is destroyed or not, eventually come down to trying to solve the problem of economic justice. And you've got it right here. Every American deserves health care. We demand a candidate who agrees. We demand a government who agrees. That, that seems to be, you seem to be right at the root of the problem of what needs to be happening right now. Yeah, I mean, I've been, I've only been in politics now for just a few years and it's always just, I, it would always been, it, it started after, after 2016, uh, the election of 2016, I got involved with a local group that, uh, you know, was looking to, to, to see some change happen locally. Um, so I got involved with them and you know that was kind of my foray into politics then early early in 2020 um you know i was still kind of on the fence about um who who, who i was going to vote for but um i you know I ended up throwing in for i i ended up getting involved with, with bernie i felt you know what this is this is the best this is the best thing i can do and um you know i've you know, after the sus after the suspension, I uh, I realized, um, you know what he said, it's not me, it's us, and we need to keep we need to keep that that going forward. And so um, I've been thinking for the longest time, like you know, even before things got really out of control with with uh, the the pandemic and the police brutality and and everything, I started thinking, you know what, I have I just have a hunch that this is the year. This is the year of the proletariat. This is the year of the American people. I feel something is on the horizon. Um, you know that, and that 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 feeling. Like I said, even even that that feeling uh, happened even before Bernie suspended his campaign. I thought, I think we're on the I think we're on the brink of something. Yes. And now, you know, it's it's like the old saying goes that if if you. Uh, you know, sometimes the universe gets your attention by dropping a couple bricks on your head, but eventually you get the brick wall, and I think we're finally getting the brick wall. And um, I don't think we're gonna, we may not necessarily see um, everybody, you know, the entire country rise up in the next two weekends, but I think going forward, we're gonna start seeing it with everything that's going on. It's all, it's all connected from the hijacking of our democracy where, you know, a few elites have essentially decided our elections to the, um, you know, the, to the, to the police brutality, to the, to the economic inequality we're facing because of this pandemic and everything. Um, it's, it's, it's going to be bumpy, but I think we're on the right side of history and we're going to weather this. Yeah. I don't know if you've considered this, but there's a dynamic, not just of voters versus bureaucrats, but or versus the media, because that's the other part of that. That's their tool. But we've got voters versus voters. We've got a whole pile of wine track mom voters and other affluent, well-educated voters who supported Mayor Pete and Elizabeth Warren and um, Kamala and Amy. And we, these wine track voters, these more affluent voters, haven't really grown up caring about the plight of the lower classes. They haven't really cared about the plight of the American worker. So some of this stuff you probably noticed amongst your own friends is offensive to the comfy, diehard, blue dog Democrats. 
And so you've got pushback, I'm sure, like I do, from people around you, not just politicians up above our heads, but from people in our own neighborhoods who say, why, why do we need to protest? And they haven't felt the desperation. So you said you, you don't know that the whole country is going to rise up. And a lot of the people who aren't going to rise up are the people plugged into the matrix who are comfortable, who have their three car garages and, and don't see why we have to why we have to get so serious about all this. They want to do the posturing. They want to do the virtue signaling. They want to make sure that Joe Biden has a sufficient number of people of color and a sufficient number of women. But as far as actually fixing things for the working poor, I don't think that our our democratic voting people, the comfortable ones, get it either. So I think these marches are going to help inform them too. Now, I don't wish that the riots and the protests would come to their neighborhoods and turn their cars over and burn their shit up. But I, but I still wish they understood that not everybody is as comfortable as they are. And that's that's what I'm really hoping to, to show everyone. Of course, we need to show the, the um, politicians. Of course, we need to show the mainstream media who just go right along with them. Of course, we need to show the bankers and we need to show the hedge fund managers and we need to show the old money people. But most of all, I think we need to show our own friends and neighbors that a lot of people are desperate. You know, that it's huge. The numbers of unemployed, the numbers of people who got bumped off of their health care, the number of people who aren't going to make rent this month. It, it's really serious. And the comfortable people need to wake up and get it. <laughs> I totally, I totally agree. Um, you know, I, I'm getting pushback from, from like I said, from this group that I'm that I'm a part of. They're just they're all, you know, they'll blue no matter who and everything. And you know, I post I post stuff online um, saying how I'm not for I'm not for Biden. If he he's got to he's got to step up and earn my vote. Um, you know, I think this was in a, a you know, in 2016 we couldn't. You know the the Democrats couldn't win with a centrist, and she was a lot more coherent and <laughs> and, and competent than than this guy, and that didn't you know she may have won the popular vote, but even still it was so it was such a it was such a mess, um, you know. But everyone's all like, oh no, you gotta you gotta toe the party line. No, it's. It's no longer about that, you know. I was, you know, I, I was under that thinking for the longest time. But then I thought, we're gonna go if if Biden were to win, we'll have him for four to eight years. It'll essentially go back to the way it was on November fifth of twenty sixteen, and then come twenty twenty four or twenty twenty eight, or we're gonna be back in. Uh, we're going to be back in the same boat where people are going to, you know, nothing will have happened. Nothing will happen. People's uh, standard of living will not have, have have improved at all. And we're going to be back in the same boat where we're going to have some other, you know, not case on the right step up and we'll, you know, saying, you know, and they're going to change the, change the system and, you know, make America great again and all that nonsense. And, uh, we're going to be back in the same boat, or the same the same exact position that we were before, if not worse. Worse. Uh, yeah. Worse. We, we can't we can't keep doing this, uh, you know, this incremental change and uh, only uh, you know, you know, with 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 nice platitudes. It's 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 time it's time it's time for change. You know, we've we need to. It, it's time for for a revolution. Yeah. The pandemic has made that all clear. I think you're right. I think this is the year that people will either wake up or I don't think we'll ever go back to sleep. I think the rioting is going to continue. I think that the cities like Portland, Oregon and other cities, I think I don't think that's going to calm down. I know the feds want to calm it down, but if there are enough people, I think you're right that there's going to be a critical mass. It's not going to be the whole country in the streets, but there's going to be a critical mass of people who are desperate and who are awake and and who who agree with you that we just have to keep the pressure on and and the pressure that you feel from your comfy friends 
I feel too. And I think we're all going to have to just get used to that. I think we're going to have to get used to them looking down on us for demanding change that goes clear to the bottom of the socioeconomic strata. And that's what it's all about. Really, to be a leftist, that's what it's, it's all about, is making sure that the change goes clear to the bottom rungs of the socioeconomic ladder. We haven't seen that before. All right, well, I'm encouraged by what you're doing, and keep me posted. I'll, I'll be glad to keep making public service announcements and um, try to show up at, at events. And I agree with you that these events are going to continue one, in one form or another. And we have to keep the pressure on. Yeah, it's uh, we're we're it's 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 strange times, but uh, you know we're in the I, I feel we're in the right place at the right time in order to to see major change happen. Um, and uh, it's 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 frightening but exciting at the same time. It is. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, it's not for the faint of heart. So many comfortable people are like, ah, oh, do we really have to do this? But then they step it up. Some of them, the best people step it up and, and they join us. All right. Well, that's all I have to ask you. If you have any parting words, go ahead. Otherwise, I'll catch you on the flip side. Um, just want everyone to know, go to our Facebook page, uh, which is facebook.com slash Biden March. Uh, that's how you can uh, that's how you can best get involved. Um, if you have any questions or anything, give us uh, send us an email. Uh, which is, uh, uh, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's on the Facebook page. Everything, everything you can, uh, you can get, it's on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Biden March, um, find an event. Um, if there's not one there, we'll get it set up. Um, but we're, uh, we're, we're building every day. Um, and, uh, it's all coming together. I'll link to those in the information section beneath this video. And I'll get you the link to the video as soon as it goes up. And you can put right. that, if you, would, if you would, put that on your Facebook page. All right. Sounds good. Excellent. Thank you. Catch Thanks you next for having time. me. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.